again everyone welcome back um now i know we've been working hard you know and i know it takes time to get all these uh, chord changes and chord shapes under your fingers um and i know it can be discouraging and you, you feel you're not making uh, uh rapid enough progress uh, so today i thought we might just have a bit of fun and you'll learn something from it too and try and do something that at least sounds like we're playing uh, music. Now, I want to say, I, I think it was Disraeli who said, the secret of success is constancy of purpose. So I would encourage you just keep practicing, just trust the process, it will come. And uh, meanwhile, we'll go off and have a look at a couple of little things that we can do make us feel that at least we're getting a bit closer to being uh, guitar players. <laughs> okay so here's a little trick that well it'll impress your friends and maybe make you feel as though um, you're at least playing something. Um, just make sure that you're sitting properly as we talked about in video four and you're tuned up as we talked about in video three and uh, <clears throat> then we want to play an E chord now e i know is a chord that we haven't done but we have done an a minor chord and the a minor chord was first finger first fret of the second string and then these two fingers middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string and ring finger on the second fret of the third string tucked underneath it so that was our a minor chord now if we just move the whole chord one string that way once String towards the bass, shall we say, that way, that way. So this finger goes from the second string to the third string, still says at the first fret. These two fingers go from four and three to five and four, still stay at the second fret. So the whole shape just moves one string that way. So we're now on three, five and four. So that's our E chord. A very fundamental chord to guitar and we learn it a bit early just so we can do this okay now you might want to use one of your thin picks your very flexible pick um, this uh, is a 38 you can use a thicker one if you like experiment with them it's all in video too what the picks are for and what you should use but um, just try strumming down across chord and then relax your grip a little bit and if we look at these two fingers they're at the second fret if we slide them up so they're at the fifth fret so that'll be the second one with a dot on it in most guitars then we play that play all the strings not just the ones we're fretting and then we slide it up so that these two fingers are at the seventh fret the next one with the dot on in most guitars go back to the bass again so we're just staying in the same shape we're just staying in this E chord shape and you can do what you like with your other hand it doesn't matter what you can do. just put down 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 whether you want to get a bit fancy or if you want to try and make it sound a little bit more musical just now we can play around with that all day but we need to turn it round at some point a bit fancy now to do is go right to the ninth fret so three five seven nine there'll be a dot there and then that's resolved by going back to the bass end of the guitar the low end so that's the E chord A 
out the fifth fret this time to a nine seven. fret because that's the octave up there I can hardly reach on an acoustic guitar if you've got an electric you can get up there easily now the chords that we're playing are actually quite complex chords okay this is a basic E chord but when we slide to the fifth fret we're actually playing an E minor seventh chord when we go to the seventh fret we're playing what's called an A add nine chord. It's, it's actually an accord inversion, so we get very technical here because the root note isn't the, the bass string. And then when we go to the ninth fret, we're playing a B suspended fourth chord. So it's very complicated and advanced chord voices. It's an inversion again. And of course, when we go up actually to the 14th fret with those two fingers which you can't hardly reach because <laughs> it's an acoustic guitar that's our E chord again so E, E minor 7th, E add 9 sort of and B suspended 4th kind of <laughs> so you're playing some very advanced stuff here and there are other frets that you can land on which will sound musical it's not just those ones. So I'll let you experiment with that with that for yourself, but just sliding this E chord shape up and down to play around with it, see um, what you can come up with. Mm. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is um, give you some little riffs that you can just play. Um, good finger exercises, good coordination. You've got to hit the correct string, the string that you're actually fingering and you've got to get your fingers doing the walking <clears throat> you'll see the benefit of these exercises um, and it's a bit of fun to play now I realized that uh, i'm playing on acoustic all the time i know i have people who play electric guitar but um, it the same thing applies to both they'll go on either um, so we'll use the electric just now and uh, the music for these is written down in a form called guitar tab or tablature it's short for um, and I'm going to show you some of that in a minute but I'll just show you the riffs first and then I'll show you the tablature which you can then copy down for yourself <laughs> okay well the first thing is the little uh, recognizable riff from a very old Tamil Motown song I uh, heard it through the grapevine and what we want to do is we want to play on our fourth string so we've got to make sure that we're picking the fourth string now I'd advise you to use a heavy pick for this the light floppy bendy ones are not going to be any good for grabbing hold of the string make sure that you get your pick quite hidden buried in your hand we don't want to be it's not afternoon tea what we want to do is we want to make a fist and get that pick so it's just sticking out the side of our thumb and we've got control over it and when you're resting when you're um playing a, a, a riff it's a good idea to try and rest your hand on the top of the guitar I don't want to go too far away um, because I want you to be able to see this but rest I'm resting my hand on the top of the guitar I'm not holding it out here otherwise it's very difficult to pick the right string once I'm resting the heel of my hand on my guitar usually at the bridge this is a good place to rest it and then I've can pick the string I want to pick so just try and get hold of that and then I'm going to play the fourth string open I'm going to play it open again and then I'm going to put my middle finger on the third fret to play the same string and I'm going to take my finger off play the same string then I'm going to play that open string twice back to the third fret and walk it down first finger on the second fret and then open again now what 
what you're not seeing here is that I'm damping the strings to give it a bit of rhythm. If I just simply play the uh, string and let it ring out. It doesn't have so much punch, but what I'm doing is I'm letting my hand just lightly touch the strings and cutting off, no matter whether you use this hand or this hand, and cutting off the noise. So this is a lot to think about. It might seem a simple little riff, but to give it some rhythm, uh, it's quite difficult to do. Okay, now uh, when we want to finish, well, we just play the open string. It'll just go round and round forever otherwise. Um, that's what you call a cadence. So we're quite happily playing. So let's have a look at how that's written in uh, guitar tablature. This is how guitar music's written down. It's written in tab. And what you need to do is maybe knock yourself up one of these on your computer, or you can just use a piece of paper and draw six lines on it. Um, those represent the six strings of the guitar. And uh, the bottom line is the bass string. So it's kind of, upside down shall we say in a way it's as if you're looking down on the top of your guitar and uh, the top line is the thin first string so we're looking at notes on the fourth string here so remember the six the bass string at the bottom is six so five four we're on the fourth string and these are the frets that we play so we play the string open that's a zero. Then we play zero three zero. That's the third fret. Then we play zero zero three two, third fret, second fret. And when we finally want to finish, we play zero open again. And the notes are grouped together to kind of give you an idea of how the rhythm goes. There's lots of different ways of writing tab. Okay, well, the eagle-eyed among you was spotted the other riff on that sheet. It was good old smoke on the water. Uh, something that's often played by beginners, usually played wrongly. It does actually involve double stropping and not just playing on one string. Um, well, we're not going to play it quite properly either because properly involves... <laughs> But what we need to remember is that this is actually in G. So we're going to play it on the bass string. Well, the fifth string is often. But it's actually on the third string, which sounds a bit thin. So I will, we do double stop in order to thicken it up a bit. I'll show you that in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the third string open. And then I'm going to put my first finger on the third fret of the, that third string. And then I'm going to walk up with one of my other fingers. It doesn't matter which finger you choose to use. But use a different one. To the fifth fret. And that's the first little phrase. Open, third, fifth. The second little phrase is the complicated one. It just starts the same way. Open, third, but then we go to the sixth and walk it back. Notice how I used my third finger on the sixth and then my middle finger back on the fifth. So open, third, six, five. I'll show you this in tab in a moment. The third part is the same as the first part. Open, third, fifth. And the last part is the easiest of all. It's just third and open. Now, when I'm playing that third, I'm giving it just a little pull, not a lot. If you can hear, 
but if I give it a little pull it gives it some attitude. So, open three, five, open three, six, five, open three, five, three, curl, open. Now, to thicken that up a bit, we play the two strings together. And this is what he actually does, although he plays it down there. Um, plays the third and the fourth string, fretted at the same frets. Plucking with my fingers here, which is, I think, probably what he does. But you can play with the pick, and just hit those two strings. Now, this is a great skill, just being able to hit those two, because if you hit the fifth string, or you hit the second string, or any of the other strings, it's going to sound a bit off. So you just got to hit those two strings. Don't forget, get your hand resting on the top of the guitar firmly. So we showed you before, and then. Maybe later on we'll look at playing the chorus as well, the smoke on the water bit, but you would have to play like this. So here's what it looks like written out in tab again. Uh, middle two strings, third and fourth string, 0, 3, 5, 0, 3, 6, 5, 0, 3, 5, 3, 0. And uh, you need to put your finger across those two strings and hold them both down together, just like you did in the F chord when you were holding the top two strings down. And you need to hit just those middle two strings with your pick. So again, there's, there's a lot to learn there. It's quite a good... Uh, little practice piece. Uh, don't forget to damp too like we did before with third it through the grapevine. If you go back and listen to what I was playing, um, I was playing zero damp, z three damp, five and letting the five ring out and you need to practice that too if you can. Okay well I hope that was fun. Um, but there's a couple of more things that we need to do today just to keep up our learning and development. And um, I'm thinking back to video six, I believe it was, where we looked at the shapes of the chords in the key of C and video eight, where we looked at how to change between those chords um, carefully, getting them to ring out cleanly. But there's something else we need to do, and I call it building a mental map of these chord shapes. Uh, so we'll look at that just now. Now talking with the drivers out there, um, I always think about it like this, when we're learning to drive, we're told that um, when a hazard uh, appears in the road in front of you and you want to stop, there's a certain amount of thinking time and there's a certain amount of braking time. So um, we can think of this in the same way when we're playing guitar. And uh, <clears throat> I put my hands on a C chord and then I see let's say a D minor chord is called for, as soon as I say that chord, the first thing I've got to do is think, well, what shape does my hand need to be in to, uh, to, to play that D minor chord? And then, it, oh yes, it's there. So that's my thinking time. But then there's an actual physical amount of time to move to that chord. So that's my breaking time, as it were. You see this <laughs> metaphor with the car. Um, now what we have to do is we have to try and eliminate the thinking time because it takes long enough to change from that to that, just physically change without having to think about it. So we want to be automatic pilot as soon as we see that chord shape, our brain instantly knows where our fingers need to be heading for. Now the best way to do this is if you did make this little sheet with the six chords in the key of C on, or even if you didn't, you can just write down the chords C, G, 7, F, A minor, D minor, and E minor. Just write those chords down on a bit of paper. Give them to someone who's going to help you. I mean, you could record them uh, on a voice recorder 
and play them back but it's kind of cheating because you'll know a little bit what you're going to say and just get somebody to shout out those code names at ridiculous speed as fast as they can possibly speak and throw your hand at them you will not hit them accurately you'll miss most of the strings but it's just to program that shape that mental map into your brain and try and eliminate or reduce anyway the thinking time uh, when we that's involved in changing chords so you want somebody to shout c e minor g7 d minor f a minor e minor d minor f c f a minor f g7 e minor d minor c e minor you could even try <laughs> doing it at that speed c g7 f e minor d minor just ridiculous speed that you couldn't possibly do and the final thing we need to do in this lesson is to learn the notes on the D string. Now, you might remember in video seven, we went through the notes on the bass string. And we said that it starts at E, elephants and donkeys grow big ears. So it started at E. We had to remember that there was one note between E and F, two notes to G, start our musical alphabet again at A, two notes to B, one to C, two to D, and two back to E again at the 12th fret. Now, if you haven't seen that video, then I would advise you to watch it first because we've got to speak those out, go up the string, down the string, three times without making a mistake, and uh, just using the naturals, that's A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, forgetting about the in-between notes, which are sharps and flats. So. Um, in the next video, video 8, we talked about doing the same thing with the A string. It's a little bit easier because we're not starting the alphabet in the middle as we are with the E string. This is A, and it's played open, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we're back to A again. So today we're going to do the same thing on the fourth string. So that's elephants and donkeys, so that's a Z, D. So open, it's D. So we're starting kind of in the middle of the alphabet here. Now, if you look at the diagram in video seven, which showed all the notes on the bass string, then you'll know that when we play a D, it's two steps, two frets, two notes, two semitones, however you like to look at it, to E, only one to F. I've just got to remember E to F is only one step, two steps, two frets to G and then we're at the end of our musical alphabet it's two back to A then we carry on with the alphabet two to B one to C that's the other one E to F and B to C one step B to C you should know this by now and then we're back to D again at the 12th fret if we haven't landed at the 12th fret where the two dots are when we say D then we've miscounted we need to start again so we do and speak it out D E, F, G, A, B, C, D. This isn't a scale, this is just learning what the, note, what the note names are. And once you've got to the top, we go backwards because it's harder saying the alphabet backwards. Helps to program it in. So that's D, you've got to think what's before D, C, B, A. And then we start again, G, F, E, and D, open. So you wanna be able to go up and down three times without making a mistake, saying what the notes are, playing them, and then we'll know the notes on the bass string, the fifth string and the fourth string. And we'll look at the third string next time and uh, we'll have some more riffs next time too. Okay, friends, well, that's it for now. Um, really just go through everything that's in the previous videos and uh, if we add some, some strumming patterns to that, get the right hand moving, then, you know, we can start presenting songs. So we're not far away, be encouraged. So just time for my words of wisdom and signing off. And uh, I'll say, remember friends, always wear a seatbelt. It makes it harder for the aliens to suck you out of your car. <laughs>